So if you were watching my live stream during the 2022 trade deadline day, you saw that I was very intrigued on when the Dallas Mavericks acquired Spencer Dinwiddie. And then if you keep watching that video, it's up on my second channel, the full reaction. When I found out that it involved Chris Stops Porzingis, I lost my mind. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Here is a rebuild I did not expect to be like ever doing. Chris Stops Porzingis. Washington Wizards rebuild. So this is pretty much with the like starting in the regular season updated rosters with the um, updated ratings as well. And we have fallen to the 14th seed in the Eastern Conference. I'm no longer playing Bradley Beal. He's out of the rotation for the remainder of the year because like they moved on from Montrezl Harrell, moved on from Aaron Holiday. Beal's out for the year, even though they acquired KP who is also hurt as well. So I don't think he's going to be playing a ton for them. They're probably leaning towards tanking or getting a better draft pick, letting maybe Kisper, their young guys in general, Kuzma just get most of the minutes to wrap out the year. And I am very excited for this rebuild though. Like we have to figure out our point guard position and this is going to be a lot more realistic than the Harden Sixers and the Simmons Nets rebuilds were because those teams are already like legit and this team is still kind of teetering between are they for real? Like what are they doing? And then you could think that acquiring KP was like, all right, Beal's coming back on the Supermax. So we're going to be building this team around Beal and KP, which is a great opportunity. I don't know if KP is going to be the four or the five for us. I honestly want him to be the four. And then we can roll with Gafford or Brian right now at the five. And then have Kuzma at the three. That's what I kind of envisioned. But we got to really figure out about this team. We'll see if somebody's up there on the trade market. But like I mentioned, we need a point guard in the offseason. Now, I think like a good point guard for this roster right now, and they would have by far the assets to get it done, would be Malcolm Brogdon. But I did acquire Malcolm Brogdon in the... New Orleans Pelicans, CJ McCollum rebuild, so I won't be doing that today. All right, so we just the 15th seed. I don't think that they're going to top Orlando or Detroit, but you know what? I don't mind that for my draft stock purpose. And I don't know, we might have to, like, I don't really know how I want to construct this team. I actually want to pull up the salary cap table to see who's a free agent. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be offering Bradley Beal a ton of money to come back. Like KCP, I'm probably going to decline a team option, even though it's not a bad, like, value. Like, eh, it's a little much. So I'm probably going to decline it. Kuzma is looking like pretty good value. Value. Hashimura could be on the trade market this offseason. Denny, I would like to keep Ishmith the getting declined and like Vernon Carey. Okay, and then like Isaiah Todd. Uh, Thomas Bryant is a free agent. We'll see if we're going to pay him because pay Daniel Gafford on um, that extension kicks in next year. So let's get into the 2022 offseason. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm trying to win next year, but this is going to be realistic. I'm not going to go out and sign Kyrie Irving, even though that'd be kind of sick. No, that's not happening. So drift lottery time. This is big. We don't have our 2023 pick. I think that's the lottery protected though from the rush trade. So we'll see where we end up. We had projected pick three. Let's hope we stay in the top five. Wait a second. Did that just say some team moved up into the top four? Oh my God. Oh my goodness. All right. That doesn't help our case. So I think we can fall to pick seven, which would kind of suck. So let's see if that's going to be the case. Don't be pick seven. Don't be pick seven. Okay, thank God. <laughs> we don't end up with the seventh overall pick. I feel like we might be the sixth pick though. So, okay. Top five, I will take it. That means, ooh, I would love, I'm trying to think of like who I can get. Okay, so we get the fourth pick. We'll see how the mocks go. So who was the team that jumped up? Was it the, the Kings? The Spurs? Like, I, I thought I saw a team go in the top four, but maybe I am tripping. Let's see. No, it was the Kings. Wow. All right. Shout out to the Kings getting pretty lucky right now. So we're going to keep Jamal Mosley as our head coach. No, not Jamal Mosley. God damn. He's the magic coach. I get him sometimes mixed up because they're new coaches. Uh, but I'm going to try to bring back Wes Unseld if I can find him. Yep. There he is. I'm going to give him a two-year deal still. Um, I don't know why he's a free agent, but I'm probably going to want to like change his like preferred system. I don't think we're going to be a defensive minded team. That's not going to be our identity. I feel like. So let's see what the 2022 mock drafts are predicting the top three to go. Uh, Benedict Mather, if he goes to, I'd be very happy. Oh my God. If I can get Jabari Smith. Oh wait, we have picked five. I thought we had picked four. Oh, we have picked five. I mean like, yeah, Jabari Smith or Paul Banker would be sick, but it looks like they're going one. I mean, if I can get Chet, Chet and KP. So honestly, I would like one of these four. So I'm praying that this isn't the top four. Like Jaden Ivey isn't a great fit maybe with Bradley Beal, but I think we can make it work. So let's see how this goes. I don't really want Jalen Duran, I think, with the fifth overall pick. So we'll see how the top four goes. Hopefully some team does something stupid. First pick the Magic Take Bancaro. No surprise there. Kings, come on, make a Kings move. Damn it, they take chat. Okay. 
So I really don't want these next two picks to be Jabari Smith, Jaden Ivey, but there's a good chance that could happen. Okay, please don't take Jaden Ivey. God damn it. <sighs> okay, those are the four players I wanted. Um, all right, so Shaden Sharp is probably the option. I took Shaden Sharp in what rebuild recently? Was it the Kings rebuild? It was the Kings rebuild. So I don't know if I want him. I don't want Jaden Hardy. Oh man, I don't even know who we'd take. Let me see like some mock drafts in real life that could actually be like a realistic opportunity here. So yeah, I feel like it's Shaden Sharp, Johnny Davis, or AJ Griffin. And I did take AJ Griffin on the Nets. So I don't want AJ Griffin, even though the, it would have made more sense to take AJ Griffin here. So I think it's going to come down between Shaden Sharp and Johnny Davis. Now, I did get Shaden Sharp in the Kings rebuild, but since he just reclassified, that was like the first time I ever got him. So I think I may get him again. And I apologize, I won't get him in like the Pacers rebuild, the 10 year that, or the 10 year Blazers rebuild, but it's either him or Johnny Davis. I don't know. Like, Davis is such a two, though. And like, so is Sharp. And I feel like Sharp could end up being a point guard, and that's what we need is somebody to develop into a point guard. I, I like his chance, or at least in real life, more to be a point guard than Johnny Davis. And like, we have Bradley Beal, so we don't need a point guard. And I don't want to move Beal to point guard. So I think for what would make the most sense would be shade and sharp for us. So we'll see if we could play him at point guard. Um, I wish my training camps was a thing because I would send him to like combo guard. So yeah, we're going to decline the options on K KCP and Ish Smith. Bradley Beal, we are going to offer a five-year extension to in the offseason. Not going to extend these qualifying offers out. So let's see how much we have to pay. He doesn't have any offers. So five years, we'll give him 40 mil because he's probably going to get something like that in real life. Uh, no trade clause, player option. Yeah, we're giving him the whole deal. Uh, Thomas Bryant doesn't want to re-sign with us, which is interesting. We do have bird rights on him, so I don't want to renounce the rights with him just yet. So let's get Beal back, and then let's see what we want to do with Thomas Bryant. I think, like I, I, I said before, I wanted to go KP at the 4, and then Gafford at the 5. I want to see if the Bulls would be interested in swapping guys from the 2019 draft class. Rui Hashimura for Kobe White. And would they do this? Because I think I would play Kobe White at the point guard this spot this year. I know he's listed as a shooting guard. And have Shaden Sharp come off the bench just for like his first year and then develop him into that starting point guard role eventually. Do they counter? They want Vernon Carey for Marco Siminovich. Hmm. I mean, Carey kind of would be our backup center, but I'm, I'm sure we can find one in free agency. I don't have to give up picks. Yeah, we're going to do that trade with Chicago. A pretty simple trade for both teams. I do want to bring back Thomas Bryant, but for 16 mil as a backup center, that is a lot of money. So I'm going to look at uh, maybe a, like a veteran like JaVale McGee on a one-year deal. Honestly, yeah, let's bring in JaVale. We'll give him about $8 million. I think he would definitely be happy with that. So we're going to renounce the rights on Thomas Bryant. Great trade for them getting uh, Bryant from the Lakers. But yeah, we are going to eventually move on. You know what? KCP, we do have our rights on. And if he comes back on the minimum, I wouldn't mind him as a veteran on the team because uh, we do need to fill up some roster spots. And I wouldn't mind maybe bringing back Ish Smith as well on a veteran minimum contract. So going into next year's season, we have... Jeez, I'm going to change Kobe White's position to a point guard. It goes up. Nice. Shaden Sharp goes down. But I, I need to, I think, need to develop him there. So we have one, two. We have three, four, five, six, seven. Or no, no. Six, guys. Because KCP is probably not going to play. Seven, eight, nine. Maybe we'll have KCP uh, P get a little bit of minutes. But we have our rotation figured out for 2023. All right. So KP and Peel are highest rated players. They might be overrating KP. We'll see if he gets... Uh, so we'll see if he can stay healthy for us. All right, so going over the rotation here for year two, I think I definitely want Kobe White at the one, Beal at the two. We'll start Denny at the three and have Kuzma be like the sixth man. Yeah, I'm cool with that. They're probably going to get some more minutes. We can go like 34 to Beal, 32 to KP, 28 to Gaffer, 29 to Kuzma, 28 to Denny. Uh, McGee, you're going to get like 14 minutes a night. KCP, I don't even know if you're going to play. So let me just throw up Kispert and Sharp in there first. And then we'll see if there's any minutes for KCP left over. Uh, I'd like Sharp to get like 23 minutes a night, maybe 25. And then we'll go 20 minutes to Corey Kispert. So yeah, I'm not going to play KCP. I'm very happy with this rotation. I'm very excited to see what it can do. System proficiency is three-star defense. We are going to probably go to balance or seven seconds. We'll go to balance. I am going to change Jamal Mose. Oh, God, I keep saying that. Was um, Unsolved Jr.'s system proficiency or his preferred system. I can't speak today. So I also haven't really mentioned Isaiah Todd, who was what, the 31st pick in the 2021 draft? I honestly, like, even though I paid JaVale McGee 7 mil, I, okay, so I'm going to play JaVale McGee over Todd, but if we're, like, not going to make the playoffs and or if I, like, bench McGee for Todd, it doesn't really change our playoff seating, I'm going to do that probably at the mid-season mark. I don't know if we have anybody for contract extensions. KP is a player option. We'll see if he opts in. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to re-sign Kobe White, especially 
that much. So let's hope Shade and Sharp develops as a good backup point guard. I'll see you guys throughout the year. Um, if everything's going according to plan, I'll probably see you at the end of the year. If not, I'll see you at the trade deadline. Okay. <laughs> That off to a great start uh, on this realistic rebuild as we are the 13th seed here in the Eastern Conference. Trey Young wins MVP. But that is a little embarrassed. <laughs> I thought we were going to be a playoff team. I expected to be a playoff team. But goddamn, Jason Preston. Damn. Um, no Shaden Sharp. Oh, no, he does make all-rookie first team. So he averaged two and a half assists. I think he will be the starting point guard next year. We'll see if that is going to work out with him. But we're not in the playing tournament. Now... From the Russell Westbrook John Wall trade, this pick is a lottery protected, so we do get it in this draft. So I'm hoping we get lucky. Adding Victor Wembanyama would be pretty sick. Adding Keontae George would be pretty sick. So yeah, um, we'll take a look at the stats and figure out what the hell went wrong with this team and like what I plan on doing with everybody in the offseason. Beal, he was good. He's staying. It was really good. There's really nothing I could say. Just hopefully he gets his defense up. He's 29 though, so hopefully he doesn't start regressing anytime soon. KP was fine. I'm cool with those numbers. The true shooting percentage was at 57%. I'm fine with that. Um, Kobe White, 14 and a half points, four and a half assists. Very efficient. Maybe he is more of a two. We'll see if we can bring him back. Not likely. Kyle Kuzma, 12 points, six rebounds. Not great efficiency though. Could he be a trade candidate? Possibly, because he does have one more year left. Um, oh no, he has a player option. He might opt out. Kuzma could be gone this offseason if he uh, opts out. Shaden Sharp, probably plan on him being my full-time point guard next year. Uh, Denny Avdia, he had 11 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Definitely the best year of his career. Free throws still suck. 3-point percentage and field goal percentage got better at least by a little bit. Field goal percentage, decent amount. So I think he's, he's a good player for us and his defense is very valuable. Da Daniel Gafford was good. He was very unhappy throughout the year. Not sure why. But I'm fine with him as my center 2.2 blocks a game, which is pretty nice. Corey Kispert was kind of dog shit. <laughs> he was not good at all. The one thing I need him to do is hit threes. He shot 32%, which is not like, it's okay if you're shooting 48% from the field, which he's not. He's shooting 35%. JaVale McGee got benched later in the year for Isaiah Todd. Yeah, and Todd wasn't great either. So a very forgetful season onto the 2023 offseason. And the Boston Celtics win the 2023 finals. Oh. These Eastern Conference rebuilds, I can't wait to face the Celtics. Like, I had confidence when I was with the Nets because the Nets are freaking stacked. But the Wizards, man, if I go up against the Celtics, I am screwed. All right, so let's hope we get lucky in the lottery. Oh, the pick is projected at nine. Wait, how does the Thunder have this pick? Did Houston trade it? Or maybe there's a swap on it? I don't even know. So the ninth pick, man, that could have about like 11. Okay, so we didn't see our team yet. I am kind of confused what's going on with this pick. But I think we're in the top four. Because I think we were supposed to be at nine, and I see Thunder via Detroit. So I think we're going to have a top four pick. Like, we should have seen us or the Rockets. But no, it's lottery protected. So unless I'm, like, dumb, I think we have a top three pick. Holy crap. Oh, my God. I think we have a top three pick. I would be very shocked if I don't see our name. I, I don't know. I'd be so confused. But give me... Okay. Yes. Let's freaking go. We ended with pick three. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Holy crap, let's go. Man, that is lucky. <laughs> let's go. Do we have any random first round picks? No, we do not, but wow. Didn't we get lucky? No, we did get technically unlucky last year, dropping from three to five. But this year, we go up from nine to three. I will take that any day of the week. We have no excuse not to make the playoffs next year. If we don't, unsell it, you're probably gone. So we have these four under contract. I'm like, in my mind, do I move Gafford in three to get up to one? Oh, the Stepien rule. Because we don't have our first next year from the from the rush trade. So we're gonna stay at three. I don't think Victor Wembanyama falls to me at three. So yeah, we gotta figure out who we want. Do we want a Dembona? Do we want Keontae George? I wouldn't mind somebody that could, uh, Keontae George is six, four. I thought he was taller. Cause I wouldn't mind a small forward. Like, cause I think Denny could be a nice bench piece. Ugh, do I want a Dembona? Not really. Not a good small forward class, of course. Like, Dariq Whitehead is probably the pick here. Is it really going to be Victor and Dariq as the top two picks? Let's find out. All right, so the Magic take Victor Wemba and Ayama. Ugh, didn't they take, like, a guy last year that I really wanted in the draft? I don't know if they were in a, they were ahead of me last year in the draft, but I feel like they got one of the nice bigs, right? Did they take somebody good last year? Yeah, they got Bancaro and Victor Wemba and Ayama. Holy crap. And they're in our division as well. That is not great. That is not great at all. Please don't take Dariq Whitehead. And I am blurry as hell. Don't take Dariq. You have Brandon Ingram. You have Brandon Ingram. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to skip the pick because I feel like it's bad luck. Tell me. 
Yes, it's Imani Bates. Okay. And I know a lot of you be like, Matt, take Imani Bates. I, I get Imani Bates a lot. And he's kind of, his draft stock is definitely hurting going into the 2023 draft, just the way he's been playing this year. He needs to really ball out for Memphis next year. So I'm taking somebody I've never really taken yet. Dariq Whitehead. Amar Bailey would have been an interesting small forward, but I'm excited. I'm really hoping he could be a franchise. Like, oh, Shaden Sharp or Scoot Henderson is really good too as a point guard. But I want to roll with Sharp there. Because then I'm like, oh, do I move Sharp to the three or have him be the six man? No, we're going to take Dariq Whitehead. We're going Sharp, Beal, Whitehead, probably KP of the, uh, or, uh, yeah. And then, I mean, we could go Denny at the four, KP at the five, but I don't think I want to do that. Oh, nice. He's the worst overall out of the top five. <laughs> It's okay, though. Uh, so, yeah, let's hope he can really ball out for us. KP wants to be a free agent. So does Kuzma. We'll see their prices. Man, Corey Kispert, he might not even be in the rotation, actually, which sucks. So, we're obviously going to extend the qualifying offer to Kobe White. Maybe nobody offers him a deal. We get him for cheaper later on. So, KP, we do want to bring back on a five-year deal, man. He can't turn that down at all. So, we are going to give him that. We're going to renounce the rights on everybody that's not really important to us, like Kobe, Kuzma. And, sure, we won't do it to KCP. Uh, so, we'll see if Kuzma gets a deal. I doubt he will after the first three days. He did? Or do we just not have bird rights on Kuzma? Yeah, Kuzma didn't sign. We do have bird rights. 17 mil for him to come off the bench is a lot of money. But we might not have better options. I mean, could I get him at like 17 at a flat rate for four? He likes three years better. He actually likes two years the most. All right, we're going to do that. That's a lot of money for Kuzma to come off the bench. But we kind of need to like keep our bench solid. So we are going to do that. Kobe White will keep an eye on. And I think... If I can get a good center too, because I don't think Isaiah Todd's the answer. So Nerlens the well is here. Nick Richards is looked like right now he's just a 77 overall, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna give Nerlens the well a two-year deal, team option. I think he should be happy with that. And we'll see Kobe White's market going forward. Um, if that can get down to like 16 mil, I honestly will bite on that. So it's day 12. He does not have a deal. He has nine, I'm sure, one-year deals. The best is 9.25 mil. Kobe. Honestly, he wants a one-year deal. Sure, we'll give him that. That's better than any other deal. And then if there's any veterans, like, sure, we can keep bringing back Ish Smith if he's, or I don't even see Ish Smith. So Bledsoe on the minimum. Yeah, I'll do that. And also bring back KCP on the minimum as well. And we go three for three with that. So I'm glad we were able to bring back Kobe White. He just didn't have a market at all. I, I, I don't really know what to expect with this team at all. All right, so taking a look here at our rotation, I'm definitely starting Shaden Sharp. And I think I'm going to start to reek Whitehead. I think we need to really develop these guys. Man, Shaden Sharp did not go up at all. So <laughs> that is not great at all. We're going to play Dariq uh, Whitehead. Hmm. I think Corey Kispert's going to get like 10 minutes a night. Um, Kobe White, you're going to get like 23. Nerlens well, you're going to get like 14. Yeah, something like that. Uh, let's give Denny a decent amount. Kuzma, you're probably going to get like 27. Ooh, this is going to be tough to really play like these three a decent amount of minutes. Like Kobe White and, I don't know, maybe Kuzma. Like, I guess I didn't really need to bring Kuzma back. But like if we went something like that, KP gets 33. Beal gets 34. I got seven minutes to play with here. And it only gets me to sharp at 24. That's not great. Not great at all. So if we did something like this for now, 27, and we did 28. Okay. I'm going to roll with this. There's a chance, like, if Kispert is just not hitting his threes, he's completely eliminated from the rotation. I'm just hoping this team can perform this year. We're three-star balanced. Ah, I don't even know what to expect. Okay, this season has been a roller coaster, man. We were off to a terrible start. You can see that we were, what, two in, two and five? And then, like, I don't know. We weren't doing great, but we have played better as of late to now be the four seed. We're 11 games over 500, but we are closer to, like, the eight seed than we are to the one seed. The Hornets are killing it this year. Like, the division itself is. Like, the Hawks, great. Hornets, great. Wizards, great. Uh, Magic are respectable, and then who's the other team in the division? The Heat, right? <laughs> They've fallen off. So I thought I was going to make a move at the deadline, like moving like Kyle Kuzma, because uh, I feel like he's just like an unnecessary fit on this team right now. Like Beal's playing great. His volume is down because I guess we have so many different scores. KP's three-point percentage is down, but his field goal percentage is up. Shaden Sharp is averaging four and a half assists. Yes, thank God, man. He was averaging like 35% from the field, 31% from three. And like 60% from the line in the first like two weeks. So he's really been picking it up, which is great. Derek Whitehead has been so efficient as a rookie, which is just what you want to see. Enough. Like efficient enough. Kobe White's been good off the bench. Kuzma's been better off the bench this year. Denny's been really good off the bench, like efficient wise. Gafford's being just fine. 2.3 blocks this year. Kispert is hitting his threes and there's no well. Okay. So you know what? I would be perfectly fine if we ended up as the fourth seed. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I am not touching this roster at the deadline. And if we go to contract extensions, nobody here. All right. So I'll see you guys 
at the 2024 playoffs. Hopefully we're in it. So we ended up as the 14, which I think is a very successful season. Wes on Silk, you are safe for now. So the Wizards are back in the playoffs as a non-playing tournament team, which hasn't happened in, what, in 2021 it happened as the playing tournament team. They didn't make the playoffs in 2020. They didn't make it in 2019. Was it 2018? I think so. Who did they end up in the first round in the 2018 draft? Was it Troy Brown? Yeah, I think so, right? It was like one of the first non-lottery picks. We got nobody on an all-NBA team. So no Bradley Beal there. Anybody on an all-defensive team? Nope. And we do get Derek Whitehead on all-rookie team, which I am very happy with. There's Kennedy Chandler who just didn't play at all last year, I guess. Oh, I'd even think about taking Derek Lively. He would have been actually a pretty good center uh, piece. So here are the player stats. I don't know whose minutes are getting trimmed in the playoffs. It might be Kispert. I know he shot so well from three this year, but I don't know. We just don't have enough minutes to go around. And I want to play the young guys a little bit to give them that playoff experience. So I think I'm going to go maybe 10 to Noel and then eight to Kispert. Still roll that 10-man rotation out there. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I might lower Kuzma's a little bit down to 22. So I got eight more minutes to play with. So we're going to go 33 to KP. 36 to Beal, go 29, 29, and then yeah, 29 to those three. So it says a proficiency go up at all. It didn't. Oh boy. All right. So we have the Toronto Raptors in round one who have, let's see, Fred Van Vliet, Lou Dort, Scotty Barnes, Pascal, Precious Achua. Okay. That's a very good team. All right. So let's see how game one goes. Like this is new to me. Wizards playoff games. We haven't had this all video. So uh, we do have a very tough opponent. I think they match up well with us and it's going to be a little like disappointing and alarming if we can't beat the Raptors. Cause then we are like nowhere near to being like the Celtics, the Sixers, the Nets, that they're so really good. Can we come back in this game? No, we cannot. Made a great fourth quarter, but not a good first three. So uh, we're already down one out. Nice. And we are technically the favorite as the fourth seed. And yeah, like the Hornets too with Lamella Ball, they developed so well in this game. All right, we're down double digits at home. If we lose both first games at home, this is not gonna be a fun series at all. I know the comeback lost by one. Damn it. All right. So the first two games were close and we end up losing. That just sucks. All right. Is 2K going to do the thing where just every road team wins? Uh, you know what? I wouldn't mind that at all. So let's see what happens here. We have a pretty solid first half, but we kind of blow it there in the third, but we are going to win it in the fourth. All right. Let's go. Bradley Beal explodes for 34. KP with 25 and 11. So we go on to game four here. The second game at the Air Canada Center. No, the Scotiabank Arena. They are up by a lot right now. Oh, we're getting blown out. All right, we're gonna be down three to one unless we come back in the fourth, which we kinda did, but not really. No, not at all. We end up losing by 16. All right, so let's see what happens here in game five. Backs against the wall at home, or is anybody gonna show up? We haven't even gotten like that great, like Derek White or Shaden Sharp playoff game that I thought was like gonna be a breakout performance for them. And we score basically under hundred points. Oh man, oh man. Like KP in the playoffs was good. KP showed up. Gafford, he was fine. He was. He had a good game five there. Uh, Derek White had sucked. <laughs> That's great. Shaden Sharp was solid enough. All right. Very disappointing to lose in five in round one. But hey, at least we made it to the playoffs. So I feel like there might be a trade brewing in the offseason. I don't know if it's going to... Oh my God, Garland. You're a stud. But yeah, I don't know if it's going to involve Sharp and or Whitehead. It might involve a Kuzma contract to match some money. We're going to see... I might have a big trade in mind. So our first round pick is going to go to the Rockets, or at least it should, but I guess it's technically going to the Thunder now. I guess we're going to keep Wes on sell. I mean, he brought me to the force. I mean, like, is there like a better option by a mile? Because then maybe I'll go after that coach. Mike Brown. Interesting. Um, Ty Lue. He's got great ratings. I mean, if I could snag Ty Lue, I will. Nate McMillan. I don't really want the grit and grind style of play. Doc Rivers. Same thing. Nick Nurse, Chris Finch. I mean, if Nick Nurse would sign with me, maybe. Yep, neither do. Okay, because I know like Unseld isn't getting signed right away. So uh, is there any other coach? If not, we're just going to go with Wes Unseld back. Uh, Chauncey Billups has great ratings, but I don't want a defensive-minded coach. I don't. Yeah, mm, Jesse Mermais. Uh, no, nah, we're going to bring back Wes Unseld. Unless he signed elsewhere. Oh, I guess he did. Well, never mind. We got a new coach coming in. I think we're going to promote Diago Splitter to be our uh, head coach. Yeah, he was our big man coach. And boom, there we go. We promoted him. That's kind of cool. An in-house signing. So, like, if we are here on draft night, like, Derek Whitehead, Kuzma, my first next year. Oh, except being roll. 2026 first. I'm just seeing nothing. Okay. So, uh, we don't have any draft picks here. I'll see you guys at rookie signings. All right. So, New Orleans, the will $6 million team option. Honestly, I'm going to pick it up. Kispert, we're going to pick up his team option. Sharp, obviously. And Isaiah Todd, I will as well. Just... Those guys could be some trade assets. So Denny, we're going to give the QO to. Do we have bird rights on Kobe White? I don't think we will. Oh, I was wrong. Okay, we do. So 
Uh, it's not like we have cap space in general, correct? Yeah, we don't. So if I was going to look at the trade market, I am intrigued about this trade with the Nuggets. Kuzma, Todd, Dariq, Whitehead, who we just drafted, and Corey Kispert, who would be in the final year of his team option for Michael Porter Jr. It is a win-now type move. I want to see, like, Brandon Ingram was also an option, but I don't give Michael Porter Jr. a lot. So I think I'm going to pull this trigger on this trade. Maybe they're worried about his injury history. So, oh, we have KP and Michael Porter Jr., two very injury-prone players, and a dead bonus who has yet to play, but I think he would be an upgrade probably over Todd. Um, Kuzma's in the last year of his deal, but yeah, they're kind of saving a lot of money with this deal as well. So we're going to lock it in. This is a big-time move, and now we have a big three of Bradley Beal, Michael Porter Jr., and Chris Ops Porzingis, the most injury-prone pick three ever. So I'm going to bring back Denny um, of the, uh, and I think I'm going to bring back Kobe White as well. Uh, so we're going to just fully go into like the luxury tax, um, just be hard cap basically. So going into next year right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're ready to go. All right. So Beal regress, but I'm excited about this team. Not going to lie. I just need Shaden Sharp to average six assists and I'll be happy. So I think Noel's going to get like 15 minutes. We're going to go like 18 to Demona. We're going to go 26 to Kobe White, 28 to Denny. I'd like to go 30 to Gafford, 33 to KP. Oh, I gotta get more minutes. Hold on. This is gonna be tough, actually. So, probably 28 there, 26 there, 32 for the regular season, 33, 33, and then 29. Probably what I'm gonna work with. Shaden Sharp, please develop. Please. I'm kind of regretting the draft pick. And there we go. Finals are bust this year. We end up as the one seed in the Eastern Conference, Keontae George. Pretty good player so far. I just, I don't know. I could have taken him as a point guard, maybe. Uh, I just like Bradley Beal on this team kind of limits what I can do because, uh, or at least for some of the drafting, like Jaden Ivey, how would the fit be? Like Jaden Sharp, Johnny Davis, Keontae George. As we get nobody on really any of these teams, damn. So we are the one seed. We are going to be taking on the Atlanta Hawks in the playoffs. Celtics are on the other side, thank God. So Trey Young, who won MVP last year, Chris Dorte. Don't worry, Pacers fans. You're getting a 10 year Pacers rebuild around Chris Dorte um, and Tyrese Halliburton. That will be coming out probably on Monday. Because I'm not going to upload tomorrow on Super Bowl Sunday, but there will be a second channel video. Link to that channel in the description. They have a very good bench. So taking a look at the player stats throughout the season. Yeah, we are going to alter it a little bit for the playoffs. Shane Sharp, 4.8 assist. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Denny of the, I think, definitely needs the sixth man minutes. Even though Kobe White is pretty good as well. So I think, like, hmm, Bona and Noel are probably going to get subtracted a little bit. Like, Noel's probably going to drop to, like, 10 for the playoffs. Bona, 15. We're going to probably go 25 to these guys because I'd like to go 34 to KP, 35, 35, and then 32. So system proficiency is going to be three and a half star balance under Tiago Splitter. Can he get that Nick Nurse run and win it all in his first year as a head coach? As we blow out the Hawks in game one, 61 combined from Porter Jr. and KP. Game two, pick up the L. Damn. By nine points. That sucks. Okay. Can we not go down two to one? We lose by one. Why did, can't this team win any of the close games? Holy crap, thank God we won game four. Don't go down three to two. Thank you. Oh my God, we blow them out. Just, like, whenever it's close, we don't win. Thank you, we win in six. Oh my God, that was just a little scary. Shaded Sharp, breaking out. Yes, this is what I needed this year. Did the Nuggets make the playoffs? They did not. They didn't even make the play in tournament. How was Dariq Whitehead for them this year? I do want to see that. Dariq Whitehead, well, Kuzma started. They have Jaden Hardy. Did they trade Dariq Whitehead? They didn't, oh my God. That's 2K's fault. That's not my fault. They didn't play him. That's, that's, that's so dumb, but whatever. So in the next round, we have the Raptors. We do. Um, they got Kawhi back. No way. They signed him. They capped for that. Okay. I guess Siakam is gone. I'm going to say the Siakam for Kawhi trade. That would be kind of funny if that's what happened. Uh, honestly, they might have done an OG for Kawhi trade. Wow, they got capped there in LA now. Uh, so let's see what happens against the Raptors. We're trying to get revenge after last year. We win game one by seven points. Porter Jr. and KP combined for 50. Game two, pick up the dub. Let's go by 21 points. Let's win game three. Yes, and let's end up sweeping them. Let's go. Now we got Charlotte. They beat Boston in seven. Here have been the player uh, playoff stats so far. Very happy with how everything's doing. So battle, battle of some Southeast Division teams. <sighs> they got a good team. They do, and Lamelo Ball has been playing like the best player in the NBA. We do win game one. Thank God we won by 17. Because it's always scary going up against, like, those teams and, like, thinking I could just get swept. As we're up 2-0, we blow them out in the first two games. Let's go. Bradley Beal's been going off. Game three. That's what I'm talking about, man. Let's freaking go. Looks like we're going to the finals here. And, oh, my God. Don't press simulate finals. <laughs> but we sweep them. Let's go. Year four, we are going to the finals. I believe this is technically year four. Uh, and we're going up against the Sacramento Kings. 
Fox, Mitchell, Devin Vassell, Sabotis, Chet. They have Jalen Smith, Amari Bailey, Jetty Osman, and Jamezi Metsu off the bench. This would be a very entertaining finals. Wizards versus Kings. Give me that. We're down two to one. Two to two. We got a competitive series. We're up three to two. Can we win in six? Yes, we can. And we end the video off on a high note. The Washington Wizards win the 2024. Five NBA championship Bradley Beal is your finals MVP. Let's go. So hope you guys enjoyed. I love ending the video off on a good note. You know, perfect four years, win a championship, and a realistic rebuild. I'm happy. So let me know what you guys think of the moves I made or just kind of the KP move down below. Yesterday, I did come out with my winners and losers on the trade deadline. If you want to go watch that on the second channel, link in the description. Also today, I've ranked every team post the trade deadline. I'm all 30 teams in the tier list. That's in the description tomorrow. I think I should have a tier list regarding the trade deadline. Um, So yeah, that's just a video off on Sunday because no video here for Super Bowl Sunday and then Monday we should be back with a 10 year rebuild with the Pacers. Yes, I'll be excited to do so. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. I'd like if you did enjoy and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.